Order in the spill, Madam Speaker. I call Chris Pink. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise um, with some energy on the Administration of Justice Reform of Contempt of Court Bill. A member's bill, of course, at this stage in the name of the Honourable Christopher Finlayson QC, and I acknowledge the member for his hard work on that, uh, and indeed many other uh, items of work in his time as a minister in the previous uh, national government. Um, Ma'am, we've heard um, a number of different uh, reasons that this law uh, is very timely, uh, and indeed the importance of the law of contempt in general. Um, I'd like to focus uh, in my contribution on uh, the one that um, has already been outlined um, by uh, Christopher Finlayson, namely um, to ensure that jurors decide cases only on lawfully admitted evidence uh, and not things outside that realm. Um, and so, uh, Madam Speaker, it seems to me worthwhile to take a moment and consider the role that jurors within juries in our uh, criminal justice and indeed civil justice system uh, play. Um, they are lay persons, of course, uh, invariably, and that's a design, uh, not an accident, uh, of our system, um, or a feature rather than a bug, I suppose we might say. They are very much part of the administration of justice, and yet, of course, they are not permanent members but chosen specifically because they can contribute in a way that reflects their uh, ordinary nature, I suppose we might say, uh, with no, um, no patronising intent uh, behind that phrase. Um, and so providing direction in, in the form of this bill, um, which brings together a number of elements, um, is, is for the benefit of jurors, essentially, because it enables them to understand their uh, obligations, uh, but also for the benefit of the actors within the justice system, uh, whether um, on the prosecution side or, or, or defendants um, or others, as the case may be, uh, and also for the benefit of the system more generally, um, the rule of law, um, you might say. Um, and so that uh, seems to me very important, Madam Speaker, that we have um, this part of our system as a very robust and clear um, part of the system. I mention clarity because the accessibility of the law currently um, is not, um, uh, I suppose we might say, uh, Madam Speaker, that it's difficult to access because it is uh, existing in various different places, including uh, statute, uh, common law, and of course the Netflix series Suits. Um, and this, period, uh, this point was made to me by uh, my lecturer in criminal law. Um, albeit without the reference to the more recent um, television show um, by uh, Associate Professor Bernard Brown. I'd like to acknowledge his uh, contribution to the jurisprudence as well as various other uh, legal academics and, of course, um, jurists over the ages. So talking to the provisions of the bill um, as they relate to juries, um, subpart four, for anyone following along at home, and I know they will be, um, first, an offence is created for jury members to investigate or research a case. So, uh, in essence, uh, Madam Speaker, um, during the period of the trial, uh, it will be an offence for a juror to uh, intentionally research or investigate information relevant to the case, um, or I suppose we could say information that they consider to be relevant to the case, um, in the ordinary sense of that phrase albeit that, of course, in the context of a jury trial, the only information that is or should be relevant to the case is that which is uh, presented to the court uh, in accordance with the rules of the court and the Evidence Act and so forth. Uh, another offence that is created, um, or rather codified, to the extent that the legislation uh, merely confirms various common law provisions, uh, is that of disclosing jury deliberations. Um, and so it is an offence under section 20 of this bill uh, if a person intentionally discloses, solicits or obtains information about statements made um, during the course of the trial, in essence. Uh, and it's worth noting, I think, Madam Speaker, that this offence uh, would be uh, committed by a person who um, sought to uh, obtain that information and not merely um, just a juror himself or herself who would um, be um, part of that act. So it seems to me, uh, Madam Speaker, that between that um, and uh, the other um, offence, uh, which I'll skip over very lightly in the interest of time, which is the disclosure of jury deliberations following a trial, uh, that we have a very good suite um, of provisions that will protect 
um, the role of the jurors um, and maintain it to a, uh, a proper ambit during a trial. Um, I call Golras Gowraman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I uh, rise uh, with great pleasure to commend.